Alexander III, Russian, III, Ipa, Ujksandrch, or Alexander Alexandrovich Romanov, Russian, semicolon Ipa, Ujksandrch Ksandrch Kmanf, the 10th of March 1845, the 1st of November 1894, was Emperor of Russia, King of Poland and Grand Prince of Finland from 13 March, OS 1 March. 1881 until his death on 1 November, OS 20 October, 1894. He was highly conservative and reversed some of the liberal reforms of his father, Alexander II. During Alexander's reign Russia fought no major wars, for which he was styled the peacemaker, Russian, Komomirotvorids, Ipa, Mjdvujts. Alexander Alexandrovich Romanov was born on the 10th of March 1845 at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, Russian Empire, the second son of Emperor Alexander II of Russia and his wife Maria Alexandrovna, Marie of Hesse. In disposition Alexander bore little resemblance to his soft-hearted, liberal father, and still less to his refined, philosophic, sentimental, chivalrous, yet cunning great-uncle. Emperor Alexander I of Russia, who could have been given the title of the first gentleman of Europe. Although an enthusiastic amateur musician and patron of the ballet, Alexander was seen as lacking refinement and elegance. Indeed, he rather relished the idea of being of the same rough texture as some of his subjects. His straightforward, abrupt manner savoured sometimes of gruffness, while his direct, unadorned method of expressing himself harmonised well with his rough hewn immobile features and somewhat sluggish movements. His education was not such as to soften these peculiarities. More than six feet tall, about 1.9 meters. He was also noted for his immense physical strength. A sebaceous cyst on the left side of his nose caused him to be mocked by some of his contemporaries, and he sat for photographs and portraits with the right side of his face most prominent. An account from the memoirs of the artist Alexander Benoist gives one impression of Alexander III, after a performance of the ballet's Arkandavl at the Mariinsky Theater, I first caught sight of the emperor. I was struck by the size of the man, and although cumbersome and heavy, he was still a mighty figure. There was indeed something of the muzzik, Russian peasant, about him. The look of his bright eyes made quite an impression on me. As he passed where I was standing, he raised his head for a second, and to this day I can remember what I felt as our eyes met. It was a look as cold as steel, in which there was something threatening, even frightening, and it struck me like a blow. There's our gaze. The look of a man who stood above all others, but who carried a monstrous burden and who every minute had to fear for his life and the lives of those closest to him. In later years I came into contact with the Emperor on several occasions, and I felt not the slightest bit timid. In more ordinary cases Tsar Alexander III could be at once kind, simple, and even almost homely. Education, though he was destined to be a strongly counter-reforming Emperor. Alexander had little prospect of succeeding to the throne during the first two decades of his life, as he had an elder brother, Nicholas, who seemed of robust constitution. Even when this elder brother first displayed symptoms of delicate health, the notion that he might die young was never taken seriously, and he was betrothed to Princess Dagmar of Denmark, daughter of King Christian IX and Queen Louise of Denmark, and whose siblings included Alexandra. Princess of Wales and King George I of Greece. Great solicitude was devoted to the education of Nicholas Azarevich, whereas Alexander received only the training of an ordinary Grand Duke of that period. This included acquaintance with French, English and German, and military drill. Azarevich. Alexander became heir apparent, Azarevich, with Nicholas's sudden death in 1865. It was then that he began to study the principles of law and administration under Konstantin Pobednostsev, then a professor of civil law at Moscow State University and later, from 1880, chief procurator of the Holy Synod of the Orthodox Church in Russia. Pobednostsev awakened in his pupil little love of abstract study or prolonged intellectual exertion but instilled into the young man's mind the belief that zeal for Russian Orthodox thought was an essential factor of Russian patriotism to be cultivated by every right-minded emperor. While he was heir apparent, 1865-1881, Alexander did not play a prominent part in public affairs, 
but allowed it to become known that he had ideas which did not coincide with the principles of the existing government. On his deathbed Alexander's elder brother Nicholas is said to have expressed the wish that his fiancée, Princess Dagmar of Denmark, should marry his successor. This wish was swiftly realized, when on 9 November, OS 28 October, 1866 in the Imperial Chapel of the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, Alexander wed Dagmar, who converted to Orthodox Christianity and took the name Maria Fodorovna. The union proved a happy one to the end. Unlike his father's, there was no adultery in his marriage. Later on, Zarevish Alexander became estranged from his father. Not only did Zarevish Alexander disagree with the political views of Alexander II, but he also was indignant by his father's long-standing relationship with Catherine Dolgorukov, with whom Alexander II had several illegitimate children, while his mother, Empress Marie Alexandrovna, was suffering from chronic ill health. One, to the scandal of many at court, including Zarevish Alexander, Alexander II married Catherine only a month after Empress Marie Alexandrovna's death in 1880. Reign. 1881-1894. On the 1st of March 1881 Alexander's father, Emperor Alexander II of Russia, was assassinated by members of the terrorist organization Narodnaya Volia. As a result, he ascended to the Russian imperial throne, in Nenil the 13th of March 1881. He and Maria Fodorovna were officially crowned and anointed on the 27th of May 1883. Domestic Policies On the day of his assassination, Alexander II had signed a new CAS creating consultative commissions to advise the monarch on ascending to the throne. However, Alexander III took Pobednost's advice and cancelled the policy before it was published. He made it clear that his autocracy would not be limited. All of Alexander III's internal reforms were intended to reverse the liberalization that had occurred under his father's reign. He believed that the country was to be saved from revolutionary agitation by remaining true to Russian orthodoxy, autocracy, and nationality, the ideology introduced by his grandfather, Emperor Nicholas I. Alexander's political ideal was a nation composed a single nationality language, and religion, as well as one form of administration. He attempted to realize this by the institution of mandatory teaching of the Russian language throughout the empire, including to his German, Polish, and other non-Russian subjects with the exception of the Finns, the patronization of Eastern Orthodoxy and the destruction of the remnants of German, Polish, and Swedish institutions in the respective provinces and the weakening of Judaism through persecution of the Jews. The latter policy was implemented in the May Laws of 1882, which banned Jews from inhabiting rural areas and shtetls, even within the Pale of Settlement, and restricted the occupations in which they could engage. Alexander weakened the power of the Zemstvo, an elective local administrative division resembling British parish councils and placed the administration of peasant communes under the supervision of landowning proprietors appointed by his government. These land captains, Zemsky Inakalniki, were feared and resented throughout the empire's peasant communities. These acts weakened the nobility and the peasantry and brought imperial administration under the emperor's personal control. In such policies Emperor Alexander III was encouraged by Konstantin Pobednostsev, who retained control of the church in Russia through his long procuratorship of the Holy Synod from 1880 to 1905, and was appointed tutor to Alexander's son and heir, Nicholas. Pobednostsev is depicted as Toporov in Tolstoy's novel, Resurrection. Other conservative advisers were Count D. A. Tolstoy, Minister of Education, and later of Internal Affairs, and I. N. Donovo, D. A. Tolstoy's successor in the latter post. Mikhail Katkov and other journalists supported the Emperor and his autocracy, as did the novelist Dostoyevsky. Encouraged by its successful assassination of Alexander II, Narodnaya Volia began planning the murder of Alexander III. The plot was uncovered by the Okhrana and five of the conspirators, including Alexander Alyanov, the older brother of Vladimir Lenin, were captured and hanged on 20 May, OS 8 May, 1887. On 29 October, OS 17 October, 1888 the Imperial train derailed in an accident at Borky. At the moment of the crash, 
The royal family was in the dining car. Its roof collapsed, and Alexander supposedly held its remains on his shoulders as the children fled outdoors. The onset of Alexander's kidney failure was later attributed to the blunt trauma suffered in this incident. The famine of 1891-92 and the ensuing cholera epidemic let in some liberal activity as the Russian government could not cope with the crisis and had to allow Zemstvos to help with relief. Among others, Tolstoy helped organize soup kitchens, and Chekhov directed anti-cholera precautions in several villages. The Borky Cathedral was one of many churches built all over the empire to commemorate the Tsar's miraculous survival in the train crash. Foreign Policy In foreign affairs Alexander III was a man of peace, but not at any price and held that the best means of averting war is to be well prepared for it. Though he was indignant at the conduct of German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck towards Russia, he avoided an open rupture with Germany, and even revived the League of Three Emperors for a period of time, and in 1887, signed the reinsurance treaty with the Germans. However, in 1890, the expiration of the treaty coincided with the dismissal of Bismarck by the new German Emperor. Kaiser Wilhelm II, whom the Tsar had an immense dislike for, and Wilhelm's government was unwilling to renew the treaty. 3. In response, Alexander III then began cordial relations with France, eventually entering into an alliance with the French in 1892. 5. Ruble coin of Alexander III, 1888. Despite Chile relations with Berlin, the Tsar nevertheless confined himself to keeping a large number of troops near the German frontier. With regard to Bulgaria he exercised similar self-control. The efforts of Prince Alexander and afterwards of Stambolov to destroy Russian influence in the principality excited his indignation, but he vetoed all proposals to intervene by force of arms. In Central Asian affairs he followed the traditional policy of gradually extending Russian domination without provoking conflict with the United Kingdom, see Panjd incident, and he never allowed the bellicose partisans of a forward policy to get out of hand. His reign cannot be regarded as an eventful period of Russian history, but under his hard rule the country made considerable progress. Alexander and his wife regularly spent their summers at Langinkoski Manor near Kotkin on the Finnish coast, where their children were immersed in a Scandinavian lifestyle of relative modesty. Alexander deprecated foreign influence, and German influence in particular, so the adoption of local national principles was off in all spheres of official activity with a view to realizing his ideal of a Russia homogeneous in language, administration and religion. With such ideas he had not been able to be in cordial agreement with his father, who, though a patriot, had German sympathies, often used the German language in his private relations, occasionally ridiculed the Slavophiles and based his foreign policy on the Prussian alliance. Some differences had first appeared during the Franco-Prussian War, when Alexander II supported the cabinet of Berlin while the Tsarevich did not conceal his sympathies for the French. It had reappeared during the years 1875 to 1879, when the Eastern question excited Russian society. At first the Tsarevich was more Slavophile than the government, but his phlegmatic nature preserved him from many exaggerations, and any popular illusions he may have imbibed were dispelled by personal observation in Bulgaria where he commanded the left wing of the invading army. Never consulted on political questions, Alexander confined himself to military duties and fulfilled them in a conscientious and unobtrusive manner. After many mistakes and disappointments, the army reached Constantinople and the Treaty of San Stefano was signed, but much that had been obtained by that important document had to be sacrificed at the Congress of Berlin. Bismarck failed to do what was expected of him by the Russian Emperor. In return for the Russian support which had enabled him to create the German Empire, citation needed, it was thought that he would help Russia to solve the Eastern question in accordance with Russian interests. But to the surprise and indignation of the cabinet of St. Petersburg he confined himself to acting the part of honest broker at the Congress, and shortly afterwards contracted an alliance with Austria for the purpose of counteracting Russian designs in Eastern Europe. The Tsarevich could point to these results as confirming the views he had expressed during the Franco-Prussian War, 
and he concluded that for Russia the best thing was to recover as quickly as possible from her temporary exhaustion and prepare for future contingencies by military and naval reorganization. In accordance with this conviction, he suggested that certain reforms should be introduced. Family life Following his further's assassination, Alexander III was advised that it would be difficult for him to be kept safe at the Winter Palace. As a result, Alexander relocated his family to the Gatchina Palace, located 20 miles south of St. Petersburg, making it his primary residence. Under heavy guard, he would make occasional visits into St. Petersburg, but even then, he would stay in the Anichkov Palace as opposed to the Winter Palace. In the 1860s Alexander fell madly in love with his mother's lady-in-waiting, Princess Maria Ilimovna Meshkoskaya, dismayed to learn that Prince Wittgenstein had made her a proposal in spring 1866. He told his parents that he was prepared to give up his rights to the sovereignty in order to marry his beloved Duzinka. On the 19th of May 1866, Alexander II informed his son that Russia had come to an agreement with the parents of Princess Dagma of Denmark, his tenth cousin. Before then, she had been the fiancé of his elder brother Nicholas, who had died in 1865. But Alexander refused to travel to Copenhagen, declaring that he did not love Dagma and wanted to marry Maria. The emperor flew into a rage and ordered Alexander to go straight to Denmark and to propose to Princess Dagmar. The Tsarevich realized that he was not a free man and that duty had to come first. The only thing left to do was to write in his diary farewell. Dear Duzinka, Maria was forced to leave Russia, accompanied by her aunt, Princess Janisheva. Almost a year after her first appearance in Paris, Pavel Pavlovich Demidov, second prince of San Donato, fell in love with her and the couple married. In 1867, Maria died giving birth to a child Ilim Pavlovich Demidov, third prince of San Donato. Alexander's reaction to the news of her death and the birth of her child is unknown. Alexander was happily married to Maria Fodorovna, formerly Princess Dagma of Denmark, and was the father of six children, five of whom survived into adulthood. Nicholas, b. 1868, George, b. 1871, Xenia, B. 1875, Michael, 1878, and Olga, B. 1882. Of his five surviving children, he was closest to his youngest two. Each summer, his parents-in-law, King Christian IX and Queen Louise, held family reunions at the Danish royal palaces of Fredensborg and Bernstorff, bringing Alexander, Maria and their children to Denmark. His sister-in-law, the Princess of Wales, would come from England with some of her children, and his brother-in-law, King George I of Greece, his wife, Queen Olga, who was a first cousin of Alexander and a Romanov Grand Duchess by birth, came with their children from Athens. In contrast to the strict security observed in Russia, Alexander and Maria reveled in the relative freedom that they enjoyed in Denmark. Alexander once commenting to the Prince and Princess of Wales near the end of a visit that he envied them being able to return to a happy home in England, while he was returning to his Russian prison in Denmark. He was able to enjoy joining his children in muddy ponds looking for tadpoles, sneaking into his further-in-law's orchard to steal apples, and playing pranks, such as turning a water hose on the visiting King Oscar II of Sweden, as Zarevish, and then as Tsar. Alexander had an extremely poor relationship with his brother Grand Duke Vladimir. This tension was reflected in rivalry between Maria Fodorovna and Vladimir's wife, Grand Duchess Marie Pavlovna. 6. Alexander had better relationships with his other brothers, Alexei, whom he made Rear Admiral and then a Grand Admiral of the Russian Navy, Sergei, whom he made Governor of Moscow, and Paul. Despite the antipathy that Alexander had towards his father's second wife, Catherine Dolgoryukov, he nevertheless allowed her to remain in the Winter Palace for some time after his father's assassination and to retain various keepsakes of him. These included Alexander II's blood-soaked uniform that he died wearing, and his reading glasses. Illness and death In 1894, Alexander III became ill with incurable kidney disease. Nephritis. In the fall of 1894, Maria Fodorovna's sister-in-law, Queen Olga of Greece, offered her villa of Manripos, on the island of Corfu, 
in the hope that it might improve the Tsar's condition. However, by the time that they reached the Crimea, they stayed at the Mali Palace in Levadia. Alexander was too weak to travel any further. Recognizing that the Tsar's life was moving towards its close, various imperial relatives began to descend on Levadia. Even the famed clergyman, John of Kronstadt, paid a visit and served the Tsar communion. On October 21, Alexander received Nicholas's fiancée, Princess Alex, who had come from her native Darmstadt to receive the Tsar's blessing. Despite being exceedingly weak, Alexander insisted on receiving Alex in full dress uniform, an event that left him exhausted. Soon after, his health began to rapidly deteriorate. He died at Mali Palace in Levadia on the afternoon of 1 November, OS 20 October, 1894, at the age of 49, in the arms of his wife, and was succeeded by his eldest son, Zarevish Nicholas, who took the throne as Nicholas II. After leaving Levadia on November 6, and traveling to St. Petersburg by way of Moscow, his remains were interred on November 18 at the Peter and Paul Fortress.